back to another video for precalc 12 and we are on to the next unit so this is going to be all about functions and uh you guys are in for a little bit of a treat we've got uh late night recording so we'll see how all of this goes I'm trying to pound out this entire unit tonight so if you're watching these in order yeah it might be a little bit interesting so this is section 1.0 we're going to review some functions. So you should remember a lot from last year. And uh, yeah, let's get into this. So the purposes for today or this class is going to be recalling what a function is. This is somewhat important, uh, especially for a review. So we're gonna use a table of coordinates to make a graph and how to use a vertical line test. Uh, spoiler alert, the first one and third one are related to each other. And uh, last one, to split a non-function into, into multiple functions. And just kidding, that wasn't the last one. And also to remember basic functions. That one should be the end. All right, so what is a function? Well, a function is a relation. So that's for every input value you have, there's going to be an output value. So you can kind of think of an out, or a function here as a some sort of a box you got an input that goes into it it does something inside of it and it spits out an output so typically in what we're going to be dealing with the input's going to be the x value your output's going to be a y value so input output um, and normally functions are going to be written as such y equals fx not always you might see different variables in there but this is just the general kind of notation that we use for it so that means in, in uh, word terms, we say y is a function of x. Maybe I said that before, and it's redundant. So how to make a graph. One way you could do this, so we can consider this graph here that we have on the right, uh, y equals x squared minus 4. How you can go about graphing this is we, take, uh, we make a table of coordinates. So we've got x in one column, y in the other column. You can pick um, whatever x values you want for this. So typically I pick a nice uh, set of values for this, but we're gonna do x and then y. So you take an x value, negative two, plug it into your equation. So the y equals x squared minus four, and you get the output zero. Because negative two squared gives you positive four, positive four minus four gives you zero. And you go along uh, this one gives me the red point on the graph. Do some more numbers. Negative 1, plug it in. Negative 3, this gives you the purple dot. So on and so forth. 0, negative 4, blue. 1, negative 3, green. And you keep going through this. You can pick, typically you do like 4 or 5 points. And then you can see the, the pattern of this graph. So notice in the graph, I've plotted out those 5 points. And the graph keeps going up and out forever. You don't need to keep graphing all those points. You just need to do enough to be able to recognize what's going on. So uh, you want to also want to make sure that you have the, um, the vertex, especially for something that's squared like this. Um, another thing you'll need to be able to do with these graphs is domain and range. So in this one, again, it's going to go um, forever left and right. So the domain is x is all real numbers, and that's what that notation means. You could also write x is a real number. That's fine too. Um, but this is the more general way you'd write it. And then a range is the y values you look at. The lowest y value is negative 4, and it goes up forever. So y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Vertical line test. So the vertical line test is a way that we can see if this is a function. So what you would do, again, we're using the same graph, you're going to draw a bunch of vertical lines. So you'd go through, just put a bunch of vertical lines. doesn't matter where you put them, just matters that you have them. Once you've put all these vertical lines, you're going to see if these vertical lines pass my function more than once. And if, uh, if it does, it's not a function. 
but if there if it doesn't so meaning you put a bunch of lines it doesn't cross more than more than once it is a function so this one here Even I could hear that motorcycle between with my headphones on. Okay, so um, so this one's a function. So you want to go through and make sure that you can realize which of these is a function. Let's try this one. So here's another graph. This is x squared plus y squared equals 9. We can graph this just like we did before. Pick, we've got an x column, we've got a y column. Pick it x equals negative 3, plug it into the equation, and we would get 0. And this would give us a blue dot on the far left. We can plug in 0. Now notice if we put in um, x is 0, we would actually get two answers. Because when you take the square root of y, you get a plus or a minus. And then so on and so forth. We keep plugging in numbers. You get different dots. Uh, I can figure out how to put a square root in here so I just wrote root that means square root and we can look at domain and range so again what's the farthest x value to the left what's the farthest to the right the x is sandwiched between those the y is the range the sandwich between those if you have questions of this just ask me a class so we do the vertical line test for this draw a vertical line da, da, da. that's the first step so you will notice here as we're going through and drawing the lines you want to check and see if it is intercepting more than once. I sure hope you can see that it crosses a few more times um, in this case. So no, this one is not a function. You might have been able to check that right away, but that's fine. So what we can actually do with this is we can actually turn this into two different functions by setting a specific range. So what you want to do is you find a horizontal line that's going to turn this graph into two functions. So above that horizontal line is going to be a function and below that horizontal line is going to be a function. So in this case, if we set a line at y equals zero, we can create a function above and below. So if you look at this line, if you cover up one half, you're going to get a function above. If you cover up the other half, you get a function below. So what this actually looks like, is you would get these two graphs. So if I split this right down the middle, notice on the left, this is a function, and on the right, this is a function as well. So we would have to restrict our ranges. So we'd say from zero, y from zero to three, that gives us a function. Y from negative three to zero, that gives us a function. So this is how you can split it up, get some functions from that. All right, here's some basic functions just to remember. So you've got linear lines, look like this. You've got quadratic lines, look like this. I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly. So you, uh, uh, the reason why these you should remember these is just remember some key points or how to graph them or what they look like, so that when you can recognize what they what they look like when you uh, encounter them. Absolute value. This might be a little bit new. It looks like a V. Um, absolute value just basically takes the positive value of whatever you're dealing with. All right, so here's a square root. Um, you you probably you know what a square root is. If you don't, um, so this is a square root. You probably haven't seen the graph before. That's what it looks like. And even simpler than any of those constant value, straight line, horizontal. So that is functions review. So um, that's that. Don't forget, if you like the video, you gotta like it down below. If you had any comments saying, yay, this is the greatest video ever in the entire world, you can also leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe because you will be able to get notifications when I put out all my fun new videos. I'll be expanding, hopefully, maybe, into some other more uh, different videos, more than just teaching videos if I if time allows it but uh, subscribe anyway because why not it doesn't hurt you